Okay, let's continue with factoring. Uh, so, in, just to remind you, in the previous videos, uh, we talked about how to find and factor out the GCF, and that's always the first stage of factoring. So whenever you're factoring, the first thing you should always think about is factoring out the GCF. Then, if you have four terms in your polynomial, then you try to factor by grouping, right? And that means grouping them into two and two, right? The first two terms and the second two terms separately, right? So that we did that in the previous video, right? Okay. Then, what happens if you only have three terms? Fix that a little bit. So that's what we're going to do in this video. When you have three terms, these are sometimes called trinomials. Right. And for better or worse, um, there's a lot of different techniques that you can do when you have three terms, when you have a trinomial. Uh, in this video, we're just going to focus on one technique that's kind of, kind of specialized here. It doesn't always work, but when it works, it's probably the easiest way to do this. And we're focusing on three terms that look like this. You have x squared, right, plus some number times x, plus another number, right? So, so the key is that the number in front of the x squared, the coefficient of x squared, has to be a 1 here, right? So this has to be 1x squared plus bx plus c. So that's what we're going to focus on here. Those. Okay, so before we do that, though, let's remind you that you know factoring is just the opposite of multiplying, right? So we can multiply three times nine, and we get a product of twenty-seven, or we can factor twenty-seven as three times nine. Although, remember, in the last video, this is only partially factored, right? Because 9 is also 3 times 3. So 27 is 3 to the power 3, right? So, right, so before we get on to factoring these types of trinomials, let's review by multiplying what we usually end up with when we factor is the product of two binomials, right? So let's multiply um, a plus 7 times a plus 9. Okay, so probably remember this as FOIL. Remember FOIL? FOIL stands for first, outside, or the outer terms, and then the inner terms, and then the last two terms. So first, outside, inside, last. So by the first terms, we mean the a and the other a. So a times a is a squared. Right? So that's the first two terms. The outer terms, right, are the ones on the outside, the a and the 9, right? So these are the outer terms. When you multiply a times 9, you just get 9 times a, right? The 9 goes in front. And then the inner terms, the 7 and the a, these are the inner terms, so that's 7 times a. And then the last two terms, that's just the 7 times the 9. Well, 7 times 9 is 63, right? Okay. So this is what we mean by FOIL. Right? And what you can often do here, the outside plus the inside terms, these are like terms, right? This is 9a plus 7a. 
right? And 9 plus 7 is 16, so this is 16 times A plus 63. All right, and so that's the answer. When we multiply right, A plus 7 times A plus 9, we end up with A squared plus 16A plus 63. But that's not what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be going the other way. We're going to take this and turn it into this. Right? So we're going backwards here. All right. And that's usually a little bit trickier. right? This, this is not easy at first. You just have to kind of get used to it. Right? And it, it's a bit of a puzzle. right? If you like solving puzzles, you're going to like factoring here. right? Because here's the idea, right? If where do, where does the if you're going backwards here, right? We have the a squared plus 16a plus 63. What we want to ask is where do we get the seven and the nine from, right? And the thing to notice about this is, right, the seven and the nine are up here in the the o and the i, right? The outside and the inside, right? When we add seven plus nine, we get sixteen. Right? We get the middle term here. Right? But if we multiply 7 times 9, we get 63. Right? We get the last number here. Right? So that's what we're going to do. Right? If we want to factor, and this will be our first example, although it'll be obvious because we know the answer. If we want to factor a squared plus 16a plus 63, right? Well, first you look for the GCF. The GCF is going to be 1, right? And we know it's not grouping because there's only three terms instead of four, right? So when you have three terms like this, what you're looking for are two binomials, and we need to find two numbers here, right? This is the puzzle. What two numbers go here? Okay, so these two numbers have to multiply to 63, and they have to add to 16. Okay, so yeah, what two numbers multiply to give you 63, the product is 63, and the sum is 16? Okay, so I start with the product, right? The product is 63. So how can we find two numbers that multiply to 63? Well, there's one obvious way. It's just 1 times 63. Okay, That's one possibility. Another possibility is, well, we know 63 is not divisible by 2. Right? It's not an even number. But it is divisible by 3. So if we divide 63 by 3, we get 21. Okay, so that's another possibility. What else can we do? Well, we can't divide by 4 or 5 or 6, but if we divide by 7, we get 9. So 63 is also 7 times 9. Okay, And I think that's it, right? Because we know it's not divisible by 8. It is divisible by 9, but we already have this. 7 times 9 is 9 times 7. It's the same two numbers, right? So now we're just repeating ourselves. So there's effectively three different ways we can multiply two whole numbers, right? We're not looking for fractions or decimals, right? Two whole numbers to give you 63. It's either 1 times 63, 3 times 21, or 7 times 9, right? However, we also have this other condition that they have to add to 16. So which of these combinations add to 16? Well, if I take 1 plus 63, I get 64, but 64 is not 16, so we can rule that out. What if we add 3 plus 21? 3 plus 21 is 24, which is also not 16, so we can rule that out. What about 7 plus 9? Well, 7 plus 9 is 16, and that's what we wanted, right? So there's our answer. The two numbers that go here have to be 7 and 9. Right. Again, we already knew that because that was the original question. 
But in most problems, you're not going to have that. You're going to have to figure out these two numbers. Okay, so that's the idea of factoring trinomials of this form. Okay, so let's try another example. Okay, we want to factor y squared plus 12y plus 35. Right. Ignoring the fact that this is not an x here, it doesn't always have to be an x, although that's, that's the usual variable we pick. It could be a y as well, or any other letter. Right. Um, in fact, in this one, we had an a instead of an x, but it'll usually be x. Right. Okay, so we're looking to factor this. Right. First of all, the GCF is 1. Don't forget that. Right. And there's only three terms, so it's not grouping. So we want to factor this as y times y, right, to give us y squared. And then we're looking for two numbers here. So I'll put these as little boxes. Right? And when we add those two numbers, we want to get the middle number here. We want to get 12. And when we multiply the two boxes, we want to get 35. So what two numbers multiply to 35? Well, I start with the obvious, 1 times 35. Right. What else can we do? Can we divide by 2? Nope. Can we divide by 3? Nope. 35 divided by 4, again, not an even number, not a, or not a, not a whole number. Right. But 35 divided by 5 is 7. So 35 is also 5 times 7. And that's it, right? There's only these two possibilities, right? So the numbers are either 1 and 35 or 5 and 7. Well, remember, they have to add to 12. If I add 1 plus 35, I get 36, which is definitely not 12. So we can cross that out. If we take 5 plus 7, 5 plus 7 is 12, and that's what we wanted, right? So 5 times 7 is 12, and 5 times 7 is 35. So the two numbers here have to be 5 and 7. So this is y plus 5 times y plus 7. Right? Or y plus 7 times y plus 5. Remember, the order doesn't matter when you're multiplying. And maybe in the previous video, right? Uh, or I'm sorry, the previous problem here, I wrote it as a plus 7 times a plus 9. But the answer can also be a plus 9 times a plus 7, right? Again, order does not matter here. So that was the first example. OK. So again, that and maybe this was a little too obvious, right, because there's only the two possibilities, and 35 is clearly 5 times 7, and 5 plus 7 is 12. So if this is easy, hang on, it, it, it's going to get a little bit harder, right? So let's do another one. Okay, so here's our next example. We want to factor, again, we want to factor completely. We'll usually say completely in case we have to do more than one stage. All right, x squared plus 14x plus 60. So again, GCF is 1, just to remind you of that. And there's only three terms, so we're going to look for two numbers. Right? This number and this number. And this has to be, right, 60 has to be the product. And 14 has to be the sum. Right? So the two numbers have to add to 14, and when you multiply them, you have to get 60. Okay, So you might say, you know, why don't I just work with the 14, right? I can do 1 plus 13 is 14, right? 2 plus 12 is 14. Yeah, you could do it that way. I find it easier to start with the product, right? Let's start with 60. And how can we find two numbers to multiply to get 60? So let's start with 1 times 60. Right? And while we're at it, let's add 1 plus 60. That would be 61. But we're looking for 14, so we know it's not 1 and 60. 
So we can take 60 divided by 2. 60 divided by 2 is 30. And so 2 times 30 is 60. So now we can add 2 plus 30. That would be 32. But that's still not equal to 14, so we know that's not it either. So let's try another one. How about if we divide by 3? 60 divided by 3 is 20. 3 times 20 is 60. So let's add 3 plus 20. 3 plus 20 is 23, but that's not 14. Notice that we're getting closer though, right? The numbers are getting smaller. So 23 is not 14, but it's, it's, it's closer than, say, 32 or 61. So maybe we're on the right track, but we're not there yet. All right, what about 4, right? 60 divided by 4 is 15, so 4 times 15 is 60. Now let's add the two numbers, 4 plus 15, and that gives me 19. It's close, but it's still not 14, so we're not done yet. So what if I divide by 5? 60 divided by 5 is 12, and 5 times 12 is 60. But now let's add 5 plus 12. 5 plus 12 is 17. We're getting close, but no, no match. It's not 14. So we know that's not it either. Well, we can go on to the next number, 6. Right? 6 times 10 is 60. So let's add 6 plus 10. 6 plus 10 is 16. Still close, but that's not 14. All right, so it's not 6 and 10. What about 7? Well, 60 divided by 7 is not a whole number, right? So that's not going to work. It's essentially 60 over 7. So we're not looking for fractions here, right? 60 is not evenly divisible by 7, or 8 for that matter, right? right? Or 9, or 10. Well, yeah, it is divisible by 10, right? 60 is 10 times 6. But we've already, we've already done that, right? We did 6 times 10. If we do... 10 plus 6, that's still 16, and that's not equal to 14. So all we're doing is we're going backwards here now, right? Our, the next possibility would be 12 times 5, but we did 5 times 12. So we, I think we've exhausted all the possibilities here, and none of them add up to 14. So if the question was to factor x squared plus 14x plus 60, and to do that, we're looking for two numbers that add to 14, but multiply to 60. And we tried everything. And there are no such numbers. So what that means is that this is not factorable, right? That this is prime. It's like a prime number, right? You can say prime, or another word is irreducible, right? It cannot be reduced any further. So, yeah, some things are not factorable, right? Um, right? Like the number 7 is a prime number. It's only 1 times 7. Uh, sorry, not 1 times 17. 1 times 7. So, likewise, x squared plus 14x plus 60, well, it's 1 times x squared plus 14x plus 60, but that doesn't really tell us much, does it? Right? That's the, the only way to factor is to factor out a 1. Right? So, 1 is the GCF, essentially. Yeah, so, so that's the answer, right? So not all of these are going to be factorable, like number 2, the previous one, and number 1. Um, some of them will be prime. And the only way to know for sure is to go through, even though it's kind of tedious, to go through the entire list, right, until you're sure you've exhausted every possibility here. Okay, and once, you, once you've exhausted all these possibilities, then you know it's prime. So, so yeah, that's right. They're not all going to be this easy here, like the second one. Some of them will be a little trickier, and in that case, in this case, we've gone through the whole list of numbers, and they're all prime. I mean, right? They're all they. Let me say it this way, right? All of these numbers here, 
multiplied to 60, but none of them added to 14, right? They all added to something other than 14. So if there is no match, then you know it's prime. Okay? All right, let's try another one. All right, um, so I had to clear the screen there. Factor completely, x squared minus 14x plus 45. Okay, so this one's a little different, right? The GCF is still one, keep that in mind. Um, but it's still a trinomial, so we're still looking for x plus something times x plus something else, right? And what do we know about these two numbers? The product right, is 45, and the sum is negative 14. All right? So we're looking for two numbers that add to negative 14, but they multiply to give you 45. All right? So what does that tell us about the two numbers? They can't both be positive. All right? You can't have, say, you know, 10 plus 4, because 10 plus 4 would be positive 14, right? Not negative 14, right? On the other hand, you could have a negative, negative 10 and a negative 4. Negative 10 plus negative 4 is indeed negative 14. However, negative 10 times negative 4 is not negative, is not positive 45. It's positive 40. Okay, so that's not the answer. But, but it does tell us the signs of the two numbers. They're, they're both negative here. Right? When you multiply two negative numbers, you get a positive number. Even though it's the wrong number, it's not 45. But it is a positive number. Right? And when you add two, num two negative numbers, you get a negative number. So if you want to think of it this way, x squared minus oops, 14x, let's try that again, a little less sloppy, plus 45, right? So that's going to factor as x minus some number times x minus some other number. So what are those two numbers, right? That's the question. So can I find two numbers that multiply to 45? Well. Let's start with 1 and 45, right? 1 times 45 is 45. But if I add 1 plus 45, I get 46, which is not negative 14. Right? So there's two problems with it. It's not negative 14, but it's not even negative. So remember, we want both numbers to be negative. So how about negative 1 and negative 45? If I add negative 1 plus negative 45, I get negative 46, which is still not correct, right? It's not negative 14, but at least we have the correct sign. It's they're, they're both negative, right? Okay. Well, continuing, what if we divide by negative 2? 45 divided by negative 2 is negative 22.5. And as I said earlier, we're not looking for fractions, we're not looking for decimals, so we can, we can just go on to the next one, right? Can we divide by negative 3? Sure. 45 divided by negative 3 is negative 15. Okay, so now let's add those two numbers, negative 3 plus negative 15, we get negative 18. But that's not what we're looking for, right? We're looking for negative 14 as the sum. So that didn't work. All right, so let's keep going. Can we divide by negative 4? Right. Not evenly. So what about negative 5? Sure, 45 divided by negative 5 is negative 9. So that, that might work. Now let's add negative 5 plus negative 9. Oops. Try that again, negative 5 plus negative 9, that's negative 14. But that's what we wanted, right? That's our match. So these are the two numbers, right? Negative 5 and negative 9. 
and we're done, right? So that's how to factor x squared minus 14x plus 45. You get x minus 5 times x minus 9, or x minus 9 times x minus 5. It doesn't matter which comes first. Okay. So again, you just go through all the list of numbers whose product is 45 and try to find one that has a sum of negative 14. So yeah, this one's not prime. All right, all right, um, let's try another one. Okay, you wanna factor m squared plus four m minus 96. Again, GCF is one, so we move on and we look for two numbers, right? whose product is negative 96 and whose sum is positive 4. Right. So what two numbers multiply to negative 96? Well, it's not 1 and 96 because that would be a positive 96. So one of these two numbers has to be a negative. Let's make it negative 1, right? So so negative 1 times 96 is negative 96, so that is the product. But is it the sum? If I add negative 1 plus 96, I get 95. What are we looking for, right? We're looking for 4. And 95 is definitely not equal to 4. Oops, right. So that's not it, right? But we do have the correct sign. Right, it is positive 95 and positive 4. Right? So in other words, it's the smaller number that should be negative here. When you add a, a, a negative small number plus a positive big number, you get a positive number. And we're looking for a positive 4 here, right? Okay, well, it's just divide by 2, or in this case, negative 2. So negative 96 divided by negative 2, I think is 48. So you can check, negative 2 times 48 is negative 96. So what do we get when we add negative 2 plus 48? We get 46, which is not equal to 4, so we move on. Can we divide by negative 3? Yep, and we get 32. So negative 3 times 32 is negative 96. But what happens when we add negative 3 plus 32? We get 29, which is not 4. Right. So you can see this method sometimes requires a bit of patience here. Just have to keep trying. Uh, can we divide by negative 4? 96 divided by negative 4. Negative 96 divided by negative 4 is 24. Okay, so now let's add negative 4 plus 24, and that gives us 20. Still no match. We're looking for 4. Okay, so is this divisible by negative 5? Nope, not evenly. So let's go on to negative 6, right? Let's just skip negative 5 because we know that doesn't work. So if we divide by negative 6, we get positive, oops, sorry about that. Hit the wrong button there. We get positive 16. Okay. And so negative 6 plus 16 is 10. Still no match. However, we're getting pretty close here, right? And if we're getting closer, we might be on the right track. So... Can we, do, oh, I'm sorry, it's negative 96. Getting a little ahead of myself. Can we divide by negative seven? So 96 divided by seven is a decimal, so no, it's not gonna work. Try that again. And now the question is, can we divide by negative eight? So 96 divided by eight is 12. 
Now let's add the two numbers, negative 8 plus 12, or 12 minus 8. That's 4. There's our match, right? So it took a little while to get there, but we got there. We have our match. The two numbers are negative 8 and positive 12. So we can factor this as m minus 8 times m plus 12. And that's it. Or you can change the order, m plus 12 times m minus 8. That's it, right? So, yep, you can always check, of course, by multiplying. If I multiply m plus 12 times m minus 8 just by using FOIL, um, maybe I should do this in a different color here. I'm getting confused. All right. So let's check if I multiply m plus 12 times m minus 8. I get m times m, which is m squared. And then I get plus m times negative 8. That's negative 8m for the outside. For the inside, I get a positive 12m. And then for the last, 12 times negative 8 is negative 96. So when I add the two middle terms, negative 8m plus 12m, I get 4m. And if you notice, m squared plus 4m minus 96 was what we started with. So that's how we know for sure that this is correct. Okay. Yeah. Be careful you don't switch the signs, though. Right? Don't do m minus 12 times m plus 8, because that's wrong. If you multiply that out, you get m squared minus 4m minus 96. And that looks correct, except remember, in the original problem up here, this was a positive 4. This is a negative 4. That's not a match. It's not exactly right. Okay, so yeah, so that would be wrong. Even if it's just changing the sign here, it, it means it's wrong, right? Okay, so I hope that helps, right? So yeah, in particular, when one or two of these are, are negative numbers, you have to deal with adding a positive plus a negative, and that usually just means subtracting, right? 96 minus 1 is 95, 48 minus 2 is 46, and so on. Okay. Um, I guess I'll let you try one now. All right. y squared minus 20y plus 64. Right. Again, GCF is 1. It's very easy to forget that step because that's, it, there's always a 1 in front for these problems. Uh, just keep in mind that won't always be the case, but for now, GCF is 1. So we're looking to factor this as y plus something times y plus something. Although this was like, not the previous one, but the one before that. I think example four, where we had the product was a positive 64. Right? And the sum is a negative 20. So that means both numbers here have to be negative, right? So let's start with negative 1 times negative 64. When we add those, we get negative 65, which is no match. It's not negative 20, right? We're looking for negative 20 to be the sum. Well, we can take negative 2 times negative 32. That's positive 64. And negative 2 plus negative 32 is negative 34. Still no match. 64 is not divisible by negative 3, right? So we're going to skip that one. And we'll divide by negative 4. And that gives us negative 16, right? So negative 4 times negative 16 is positive 64. Negative 4 plus negative 16 is negative 20. But that's our match, right? That's what we wanted. So hey, we're done. So this wasn't that bad. It's y minus 4 times y minus 16. Or y minus 16 times y minus 4. Either way. 
And you can check by multiplying this out and see if you get if you get this, right? Okay, I hope that helps. Let's let's do another. Let's keep going. All right, we want to factor x squared plus 19xy plus 70. Right, so this might look a little bit trickier because there's two variables, right? There's x and there's y. But it's done exactly the same way. The only difference is that, right, when you multiply x times x, that gives you the x squared. However, when you multiply, well, the result here, it has to multiply to 70y squared. So we know y squared you can get by y times y, right? So yeah, y times y is y squared. So now the only issue is what numbers go in front of the y here. So same problem, what two numbers multiply to 70, that's the product, and add to 19? Okay, so here they're both positive, right? So we're back to the first, the first type of problems we did. We can just start with one times 70, that's 70. And when we add one plus 70, we get 71, but that's not it because we're looking for 19. Okay, let's divide by 2. 70 divided by 2 is 35, so 2 times 35 is 70. And 2 plus 35 is 37. So that's not it, we're looking for 19, right? Okay, can we divide by 4? Uh, I'm sorry, can we divide by 3? I skipped one. 70 divided by 3 is not a whole number, so no. And same thing with 4. It's not divisible by 4. What about 5? So 70 divided by 5 is 14. Okay, so what's 5 plus 14? 19. But that's what we wanted. That was our match, right? So the two numbers we want are the 5 and the 14. So 5, 14. So without the boxes here, it looks better. This is going to be x plus not just 5, but 5 times y. And it's not just x plus 14, but x plus 14 times y. Right. Or if you change the order, x plus 14y, if that comes first, and then the x plus 5y, You'll see that's the same thing. Okay, so again, we can check just by doing FOIL, multiplying it out. x times x is x squared. x times 5y is 5xy. And then 14y times x is 14x times y. And then the last, 14y times 5y is 70y times y, or 70y squared. So the only thing left to do is add the, the middle two terms. 5xy plus 14xy is 19xy. And that's exactly what we started with. Right. It's this thing here before I circled everything. So that tells me that this is correct. So, yep. So, yep. When you see two variables like that, you're still just look. You're just focusing on the two numbers here, the 19 and the 70. Okay. Here's an interesting one. We want to factor 8 minus 7x minus x squared. Okay. So this looks backwards. So why don't we write it with the squared term coming first? Right. That's the conventional way to do this, right? So let's put negative x squared first, and then the negative 7x, and then the positive 8. Okay. It's the same thing, Just I just switched the, the first and the last terms here, right? You can always switch the order when you're adding or subtracting, right? As long as you keep the same signs, right? Okay, 
So, right, so the problem here is that we have this negative sign in front of the x squared. But remember, when that happens, you can always factor out a negative 1. When you do that, you get positive x squared plus 7x minus 8. Okay, so at this point, now this is what we want to factor, right? We know the negative 1 is in front here. How do we factor x squared plus 7x minus 8? Just the usual way. Look for two numbers whose product is negative 8 and whose sum is 7. So the product is negative 8. Well, let's start with negative 1 times 8. Well, when we add the two numbers, negative 1 plus 8 is 7. Look at that. We got it on the first try here. So we either got very lucky or I just happened to pick the right numbers. Right? And in, in fact, we can stop here, but there's only one other possibility, right? Negative 2 times 4 is also negative 8, but negative 2 plus 4 is not 7, right? It's only 2. So that wouldn't have worked. Right? I mean, there are other possibilities here, right? There's also positive 1 times negative 8, but positive 1 plus negative 8 is negative 7, and that's the wrong sign. We're looking for a positive 7, right? Remember, pay no attention to the original problem with the negative 7. Remember, we factored out the negative 1 here, so we're looking for a positive 7 now, not a negative 7. All right, anyways, the two numbers are negative 1 and positive 8, right? So don't forget that we factored out the negative 1 first. So there's still a negative sign in front. So it's negative times x minus 1 times x plus 8. Right. Or if you change the order, you can do negative x plus 8 times x minus 1. Either way works. Um, you know, if you want to make it a negative 1, that's fine, but it's the same as just a negative sign. Right. And there's actually two other possible answers here. Uh, let me see if I can squeeze them in here. Um, you can also write 8 plus x times 1 minus x. Right. So if you did it without factoring out the negative 1, if you factored it this way, it's a little trickier, but you can do it that way. And if you do it that way, this is probably your answer here, right? So this is also correct. Any one of these three would be correct. Right? Although I would prefer factoring out the negative, the negative one first. I just find it easier that way. Okay. Let's try another one. We want to factor 4a squared plus 24a minus 160. Yeah, this one's going to be a little bit trickier, right? For one thing, we have some pretty big numbers here. The negative 160, right? I think that's the first time we saw a three-digit number here. But, right, so you have to be careful. You're not looking for two numbers whose product is negative 160 and whose sum is 24. The reason why we can't do that is because of this 4 in front, right? That number had to be a 1, and it's not, right? So the method that we were using doesn't quite work here, right? So if that method doesn't work, then how are we supposed to do this, right? This, it, this looks like a question that we're not supposed to be able to, to know just yet. Um, and it's true that we will learn how to do this when this number is not a 1. That's coming in the next section, but we're not there yet. Right. What are we forgetting? Right. Remember GCF? Up until now, it's always been a 1, right? But now it's not 1 anymore. All three of these numbers are divisible by 4. So the GCF is 4. So we have to factor out the GCF first, right? If we factor out the 4, we're left with a squared plus 6 times a minus uh, 40, right? I think 
think that's it. So now that we factored out the four, now you can see that the number in front here is a one. And now we can do the usual thing, right? We're looking for two numbers, right? Here and here. When you multiply them, you get negative 40. And when you add them, you get positive six. Okay, so I'll leave them without the boxes here, right? And in fact, when you're multiplying two numbers to get negative 40, you know that one has to be positive and one has to be negative, although not necessarily in that order, right? So yes, the product is negative 40. So what two numbers multiply to negative 40? So we can do negative 1 times 40, right? And if we add those, negative 1 plus 40 is 39, which is positive, but it's not positive 6. So that's not it, right? Yeah. So that's not equal to 6. Well, let's see. What if we divide by negative 2? We get positive 20, right? So negative 2 plus 20 is 18, but that's still no match because we're looking for 6. Okay, what if we divide by negative 3? Well, then we don't get a whole number, so let's skip that one. What if we divide by negative 4? Negative 40 divided by negative 4 is positive 10. So now we add negative 4 plus 10, and we get 6. But that was what we wanted. That was our match, right? So we're done. The two numbers are negative 4 and positive 10. So that means the negative 4 goes here, the positive 10 goes here. Or you can put the negative 4 first, and then the positive 10. Oops, either way. And there we go. Right. The point is that we had to factor out the 4 first before we can use the technique that we've been using all along here, right? Yeah, with that 4 here, this method was not going to work, right? But there are other methods. Again, the first thing you always want to factor out is the GCF. And until now, the GCF was always 1, or negative 1, in the case of the previous example. So when the GCF is not 1, factor that out first. Right. That's always the first stage when you're factoring. Okay, try this one. We want to factor 2x squared plus 10x plus 6. Right, so the GCF here is just the 2. So factor out the 2. And when you divide by 2, you're left with x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay, so without the 2, now we can see if we can factor this. So what are we looking for? We're looking for two numbers that add to, th uh, sorry, multiply to 3, but add to 5. So yeah, the product has to be 3, and the sum has to be 5. So, what two numbers multiply to 3? Exactly, one, 1 and 3, right? 1 times 3 is 3. And let's add 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. But that's not it. We're looking for 5. So, what else can we do? Yeah, not much, right? We could do negative 1 times negative 3. But that just makes it negative 4, which is still not a positive 5. Yeah, th those are the only two possibilities here. So what does that mean? Right? There are no two numbers whose product is 3 and whose sum is 5. We tried everything, and it doesn't work. Right? So we can't go any further. Right? Remember, earlier we said that this was prime. But be careful, that's not the answer here. Right? x squared plus 5x plus 3 is prime. That's irreducible. Right? If that were the question, then you can say the answer is prime. 
But that wasn't the question, right? The question was to factor this. And we did, right? The answer is this. 2 times x squared plus 5x plus 3. Right. So the only thing we had to do here was factor out the GCF. We tried factoring this further, and we got stuck. Essentially, we ended up with a prime factor here, right? So, yeah, so be careful here, right? The answer is not prime, right? That would only be the answer if this were the question. But the original question had that factor of 2. Okay, so you factor out the 2. You can try to factor this, and we did, but we didn't get anywhere, right? We didn't get the... We didn't get the middle term we wanted. We needed a, the, the sum to be 5, and we're never going to get that. Okay, so with that in mind, right, what I have here in this box is the final answer for this problem. Okay. Yeah, a little bit tricky. Again, the GCF was not 1. When you factor out the GCF, the, the remaining factor is prime, but the answer is what you get when you factor out the two here. Right. Okay. Um, I think I'll let you try two more and then we can move on to the next section. Okay, so we want to factor w squared minus 3w minus 180. Yeah, don't forget to look for the GCF. In this case, it is just a 1. Okay. So we're looking for what? We're looking for two numbers whose product is negative 180, right? And whose sum is negative 3. Okay, probably not obvious, at least it, to most of you, that's not obvious. So let's go through all the possibilities here. Um, let's start with just the obvious, negative 1 times 180. Well, let's add those numbers together. Negative 1 plus 180 is 179, which is clearly not correct, right? It's not negative 3. So we have the wrong number, but we also have the wrong sign. We're looking, looking for a negative 3, not a positive 3. So that tells me that I have the signs in the wrong place. How about if we do a positive 1 times a negative 180. So 1 minus 180 is negative 179. Okay, well that's still not correct. It's not negative 3. But the point is, we have the correct sign. They're both negative. So in other words, the, the bigger number here should be the negative, so that when you add them, you end up with add, the sum being a negative number. All right, so that didn't work. Let's go on to, say, a positive 2 divided, uh, sorry, positive 2 times negative 90. Right, that's still negative 180. And now when we add 2 plus negative 90, or 2 minus 90, we get negative 88. And that's not negative 3. So let's go on. If we can divide by 3, we get negative 60. So negative 180 is 3 times negative 60. 3 minus 60 is negative 57. Still no match. So how about 4 times negative 45? Right? 4 times 45, 180. So if we take 4 minus 45, we get negative 41. Still no match, right? So can we divide by 5? Um, so I need a calculator for that. Negative 180 divided by 5 is negative 36. Right. So 5 minus 36 is what, negative 29? No, sorry, my bad. Negative 31. Either way, it's not negative 3. Right? So no match there. Well... Let's keep going. How about if we divide by 6? Then we get negative 30. And 6 minus 30 is negative 
24. Still no match. Well, can we divide by 7? Nope, not evenly. Can we divide by 8? Again, not evenly. Can we divide by 9? Yep. 9 times negative 20, negative 180. So 9 minus 20, negative 11. Still no match, right? So this is looking pretty hopeless here. Um, but let's keep going. Can we divide by 10? Yep, 10 times negative 18 is negative 180. And 10 minus 18 is negative 8. Still no match. Um, so what's next? How about 11? Yep, 180 is not divisible by 11. So I think we can skip that one. How about 12? So negative 180 divided by 12 is negative 15. And let's take 12 minus 15. That's negative 3. So there we go, right? That was the sum that we wanted. And so this works. This is not prime, right? The two numbers are the positive 12 and the negative 15. So w plus 12 times w minus 15. Or, if you prefer, w minus 15 times w plus 12. Right. But not w plus 15 times w minus 12. And the reason why that doesn't work is because when you, when you add them, you get a positive 3w. Right. And we're looking for a negative 3w here. So, wrong sign. Yep. So, yep, this one was a bit of a pain, right? We had to go through quite a lot of these until we got to the match, the one that worked. Um, but that's how it goes sometimes, right? And that, that happens when you get these really big numbers here, like the negative 180. Um, so you shouldn't see too many of those. Most of these you can probably figure out in, say, three or four steps, occasionally five or six. And I think we needed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, ten, ten steps to get to the, to get the, to get the match, right? So ten attempts, ten tries before we got there. Um, yeah, so that was a hard one just because it was a very long list of numbers. But eventually we did get there. We did find a match, right? So if you give up too early, if you right, if you give up at this point and say I'm, it's never going to work, you might think it's prime when it's really not. Right? So so be careful, right? This is not prime. Right. All right. Um, so let's try one more. Okay, we want to factor completely x to the fourth times y minus 3x cubed y minus 10x squared y. Right, and again, part of the reason why this is trickier is because there's two variables. There's x and y, right? And also the exponents are bigger than they used to be, right? This is x to the four instead of usually x squared is what we start with, right? So where do we start? How about with the GCF, right? Because it's not 1 in this case, even though there's a 1 in front here, right? So the 1, 3, and 10 only have the 1 in common. However, look at the, look at the letters, right? They all have an x in it. So we know we can factor out an x. In fact, we can factor out two of them because the smallest exponent is x squared, okay? So the GCF will contain x squared. Um, they also all have a y in it, right? So y is a factor of each. That means we can factor out just a y. There's no y squared, so y to the 1 is the highest we can go, right? So the GCF is x squared times y. So the first thing we're going to do is factor that out. Right. What do we get when we divide 
this by x squared y? Well, x to the fourth y divided by x squared y is just x squared. Negative 3x cubed y divided by x squared y is just negative 3x. Negative 10x squared y divided by x squared y is just negative 10. And I put the parentheses way too far. OK, so that's a little better. Right? And maybe we're done, but maybe we're not. Right? We have to try to factor this, x squared minus 3x minus 10. And we do this the usual way. Right? What two numbers multiply to get negative 10 and add to get negative 3? So I'm going to do that over here this time. The product is negative 10. Right? We want them to add to negative 3. So if you start with negative 1 times 10, when you add those, you get positive 9, which is not negative 3. In fact, it's not even negative. So that tells me switch the signs, right? Make it a positive 1 and a negative 10. When you add those, we get negative 9, which is still not negative 3. However, they're both negative, right? So we have the correct sign now. We want them to add to a negative number. So that still doesn't work, right? Um, and if we go on to the next number, the 2, it's going to be 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And 2 plus negative 5 is indeed negative 3. So there's our match. Right? So x plus 2 times x minus 5. And that's it. Again, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but you can always change the order. You can put the x minus 5 first and then the x plus 2. However, I strongly suggest you put the monomial, the x squared y, in front, rather than in the middle or in the back. OK, so again, a little bit of a tricky one if you forgot to factor out the GCF, because this looks pretty intimidating when you first see it. But once you realize you just have to factor out that GCF, what's left over here, the x squared minus 3x minus 10, um, is one of the easier ones you're going to see here, right? In terms of just how many possibilities there are, how many combinations there are. OK. Um, yeah, I know I said this was going to be the last one. I feel like we should do maybe one more, though. OK, last one, I promise. Um, x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 33. We want to factor that completely. OK, so like in the last problem, the exponent, right, the biggest exponent is not a 2 anymore, it's a 4. But however, there's no x at the end here, right? This is not negative 33x, right? So x is not a common factor for all three terms. So yeah, the GCF here is actually just 1. Right? It's the one in front. So, so what do we do? Well, we're still looking for two numbers whose product is negative 33 and whose sum is 8. But what goes in front here is not just x times x, because x times x would be x squared. However, you can get x to the fourth by multiplying x squared times x squared. See that? So if I multiply this out, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. And that'll be the first term. Now we just have to figure out the middle and the last, right? So, so what are the two numbers here? The product has to be negative 33, and the sum has to be positive 8. So negative 33 is negative 1 times 33. When we add those numbers, Negative 1 plus 33, we get positive 32, which, of course, is incorrect. We're looking for 8, so that's no match. However, it is a positive 8, and we have a positive 32. So we have the signs in the right place, right? The smaller number here should be negative. Okay. Can we divide by negative 2? Nope, not evenly, so let's skip that. 
Can we divide by negative 3? Sure, negative 33 divided by negative 3 is 11. Okay, and let's add negative 3 plus 11, or 11 minus 3. That's going to be 8, and that's our match, right? We wanted that to be the sum. So again, we didn't have to look very far. It was essentially the second, second attempt, and we got it. So the two numbers are negative 3 and positive 11. Again, you can switch the order. x squared plus 11 times x squared minus 3. But don't change the signs, right? It's not x squared minus 11. So you can write it either this way or this way. And again, if you're not convinced, you should always check, right? Foil it out. And right, when you do that, you should get this. So, so I hope that helps. And I, I did promise that was the last one. So that's the last one for this video. Um, but we're not done with factoring, right? We're still gonna we're still gonna factor, and we're gonna be factoring trinomials. Um, but we're gonna expand that to you know when the first number is not necessarily a one. Let's say it was 3x to the 4. Right? So that's coming up in the next video. Um, so I hope this helps.